Hey everyone, this is Christian Heimel, host of Caught Listening. Thanks for listening to the following podcast on Public House Media. You're listening to Catch Up, an official news production of Public House Media. Today is June 22nd, 2020. It's time to catch up on the news that you need to know about. Today we're helping you catch up on William Barr's public dispute with the New York U.S. Attorney. Beyonce drops a new single in celebration of Juneteenth. And the Belmont Stakes runs amid unique circumstances. And Nobel Prize winner Malala Yousafzai celebrates another achievement. We're your hosts Dan Kotnick. And Baxter Colburn. Welcome to Catch Up. U.S. Attorney General William Barr and the Trump administration have found themselves a part of another public controversy over the weekend, this time involving the attorney at the center of the criminal investigation of Trump's political allies. On Friday, Attorney General Barr announced that Manhattan U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman would be resigning from his post, a position considered to be one of the most influential in the legal field, and replacing him with New Jersey U.S. Attorney Craig Carpentino. Berman released a statement, however, stating that he had not agreed to step down and actually learned about the decision from Barr's statement. As the situation progressed on Saturday, Berman's holdout against Barr's decision appeared to pay off. Republicans in the Senate who would have to approve any new appointees seemed to be reluctant to stand with the administration in what would most likely be a partisan fight with Senate Democrats. Senator Lindsey Graham, a close ally of Barr and the Trump administration, and Senate Judiciary Chairman implied he would defer the ultimate decision of approving a new appointee to New York Democrats. By Saturday afternoon, Barr changed course by announcing Berman's current deputy, Andre Strauss, would become the acting attorney and move, a move which prompted Berman to end his holdout and step down. Berman and his office have been at odds with the Trump administration before. Berman led the legal prosecution of Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, and his team is currently investigating former New York mayor and now Trump aide Rudy Giuliani, while also indicting Giuliani's former associates Lev Parnas and Igor Furman. We're joined now by catch-up correspondent Max Wolpoff to discuss further. And Max, the first question I want to ask of you is how out of the ordinary is this for a U.S. attorney general to make a move like this? Or uh, is it being more blown up because of kind of the political atmosphere that we find ourselves in right now? It's a little of column A, a little of column B. So the Southern District of New York U.S. attorney position is considered easily one of the most coveted of the U.S. attorney position. It's nicknamed the Sovereign District of New York with just how much the SDNY handles. And the high profile cases you mentioned include as well Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking charges and Michael Avenatti's extortion cases were both run through this office. So some of this goes back to the leaked excerpts from John Bolton, the former national security advisor's upcoming book, where he detailed an episode where President Trump alleged, allegedly promised the Turkish president Recep Erdogan that he would take care of things, as the book wrote, with regard to investigations of a Turkish bank run through the Southern District of New York. So this is being taken into a close microscope, especially because it is such a high profile position And because of Berman's personal ties to the administration, he was a with a law partner of Rudy Giuliani himself. He was on the Trump transition team and personally interviewed for the Southern District of New York job back in the early days of the presidency. As you mentioned, the Southern District of New York, it wields a ton of power in the legal sphere, as we've seen. And this whole situation kind of seems to be a a shot across the bow from the Trump administration. So what are we likely to kind of see from either side moving forward as a next step? Does this district have much power to like retaliate for lack of a better term, or will we see more involvement on the federal side? as kind of an attempt to control this district a little bit more. Well, the prevailing report now in the last couple of hours has been that the Trump administration will nominate the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Jay Clayton, for the job. And this is, he's reportedly one of the president's personal golf partners. Now, procedurally, you mentioned that the senators from New York have opposed the nomination. So state senators are allowed to submit something called a blue slip opposing any U.S. attorney nomination within their state. They do the same thing with judges and Chuck Schumer and both Kirsten Gillibrand have both said that they plan to do so to block Clayton's nomination. Clayton is not an experienced litigator, nor is he an experienced prosecutor. 
And one of his disclosed clients from his private sector days is Deutsche Bank. And Deutsche Bank is embroiled in their own legal fight over Trump's finances. So under ethics rules, Clayton would not be able to participate in any Southern District of New York actions against Deutsche Bank if that happens to be the post that he gets confirmed to. Well, Max, thank you again for coming on with us and, as always, bringing uh, some light into the complicated field that is uh, the legal sphere. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for having me. Juneteenth was earlier this week. On June 19th, the holiday signifies the end of slavery in the United States, which was June 19th, 1865. In the final hours of Juneteenth this year, Beyonce shook the music world, as per usual, with the release of her latest song, Black Parade. NPR stated, quote, The song sounds like an outright celebration. The Juneteenth release date is especially deliberate, coming from Beyonce, a proud Texas artist, close quote. The song makes references to Beyonce's home state of Texas, but also incorporates Egyptian, Nigerian, and African references to pay homage to the history of Juneteenth. Juneteenth is usually celebrated with various parades worldwide, but due to COVID this year, those celebrations have been canceled. This track offers a new way to celebrate the holiday through empowering music. NPR calls the song a call to action and a salve for a wounded nation. Sports in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic have resulted in many firsts, and Saturday we saw another one as the 152nd Belmont Stakes was held at Belmont Park in New York. Odds on favorite Tis the Law won, and while the outcome itself was not out of the ordinary, the circumstances in which it happened were. The Belmont is traditionally the third and final race in the Triple Crown, with the Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes before it in May and June. However, horse racing officials announced earlier this year the first two races would be rescheduled to September and October, respectively. It's the first time since 1931 the races have been held out of order, and the first time the Belmont was ran as the first in the series. Tis the Law will now be able to make his unique run at becoming a Triple Crown winner and may actually now have an advantage over previous winners. The horse and his trainers will have 11 weeks between their first win before running in the Derby and then a month before the final leg, as opposed to running all three within a month and a half. On top of that, with this year's Belmont race, which is usually the longest race in the series, was shortened from the typical one and a half miles to one and one eighth, meaning Tis the Law avoids a hurdle other Triple Crown winners all had to overcome. In today's good news, worldwide women's education advocate Malala Yousafzai graduated from Oxford University just eight years after Pakistani Taliban shot her three times in the head during her standing up for women's rights and education at the young age of 15. Prior to graduation, she became a published author, as well as the youngest Nobel Peace Prize recipient to date. On June 18th, she celebrated her graduation on social media with a photo of herself covered head to toe in cake, smiling with the caption, quote, Hard to express my joy and gratitude right now as I completed my philosophy, politics, and economics degree at Oxford. I don't know what's ahead. For now, it'll be Netflix, reading, and sleep. Thanks for catching up on today's news with us. I'm Dan Kotnick. And I'm Baxter Colburn. Please be sure to catch up with us again tomorrow. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate you listening to Catch Up. For even more content, we encourage you to follow Catch Up Digital on social media. Just search for at Time for Catch Up. We'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the stories we've covered today. Just use the hashtag Pass the Catch Up on social media. Catch Up is an official production of Public House Media. 